asking not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ, as Christ Jesus. Paul the Apostle looked at the blessed old days when he came to the province of Galatia. And they received the word of God. And they received the minister of the gospel. They received this preacher called the apostle. And he said, the way you received me at the beginning, when that truth came to you fresh, when that truth of the gospel, when it came to you for the first time, you received me as the angel of God, as Christ Jesus himself. Then he said, he said, where then, where is the blessedness you speak of? The blessedness of the past, when he was the only teacher, when he was the only apostle they knew, when he was the only miracle worker they knew, when he was the only evangelist they knew, when he was the only minister they knew, and they accepted the word of God, and they accepted that word as if Christ Jesus himself, he has come to speak unto us. And now things have changed because other people have come, disturbed their mind, and putting them in another gospel, another conviction, another understanding. He said, I know the way you loved me in the past when you received the word of God newly. Then he said, Where is the blessedness that you spoke of at that time? For I bear you record that if it had been possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me. That's the way they appreciated the gospel originally. But you see, because they were not taking note of the apostolic caution, because they were not taking note of what the Lord has said they should do, that you should not be carried about with every wind of doctrines, strange and diverse doctrines. They'll be shifted. And because they're shifted, their mind was no more upon the law, upon the affection, upon the interaction and the fellowship they had for the preacher or the apostle. So he said, I can see the blessedness you spoke of. I bet you record that in those good old days, if you could take if you could take your eyeballs out and donate them to me for transplanting. You would have done it. I might therefore become your enemy. Because I tell you the truth. And Paul the Apostle was concerned. Because these people were shifting grounds. They were shifting from here to there. And then he tells us in verse 19 now. He says, my little children. You know, even though they were speaking tough and hard. It was because of the love he had for them. Now he called them my little children. Of whom I travel in birth again. Until Christ be formed in you, I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice. For I stand in doubt of you. I stand in doubt of you. They have not heeded the apostolic caution, the apostolic warning. And because they didn't heed the warning, he told them over and over and over again. He even said, if an angel from heaven comes to tell you any other thing than what we have told you, let him be accursed. And he was so strong about it. And yes, the they didn't take note of what he said. He said, I stand in doubt of you. The blessedness of the past is gone. And I see instead of blessedness, I see some bitterness. And, I see, and he says, where do you stand? Now? Where are you now? We must heed the apostolic caution. The apostolic caution against false doctrine. Look at chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 7. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth that he shall also reap. Whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Let us not be weary in well doing. For in due time we shall reap with a faith not. He said, don't ever get tired of the sound doctrine. Don't ever get tired of this true gospel. Don't ever get tired of the gospel that delivers us from sin. That totally will take away the very root of sin from you and give you a new life, a change of life and a change of life so that your heart is established upon the word and upon the grace of God. God. Then he goes on in verse 10, as we have, as we have there for opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are the household of faith. You see how large a letter I have written unto you. 
It says, so this chapter 6 I'm reading now, in chapter 6 we're looking at, and this is uh, verse 7 and, 7 and 8, be not deceived, God is not mocked, whatsoever a man sweareth, that shall he also read. I jumped verse 7, you know, chapter 5, I want to go back to chapter 5, chapter 5 now, verse 7. You did run well, you know what's happy about them, originally, you did run well. How great when you believe in that repentance, that restitution, that righteousness, how great it was. You did run well when you believe in salvation by grace, and salvation by faith in Christ. The salvation that changes life, that makes you a new creature in Christ. All things passing away, and all things becoming new. And then I saw you running the race that was set before you, and your mind and your heart and your will, everything focused on the Almighty God, and you had a goal in front of you that you don't allow anything to do to make you to distract your attention. You did run well, but the apostolic caution that they omitted, that they didn't take note of, you did run well. Who did hinder you that he should not obey the truth? This persuasion comes not of him that calleth you. He told them the persuasion to now, you know, be wishy washy, or stable, or steady, not standing firm. That kind of persuasion, not to be so strong in your conviction. That kind of persuasion, don't be narrow minded. Give allowance to all the views. That kind of persuasion. It says it's not coming from the one who has called you. A little leaven, leave that the whole law. Have confidence in you through the Lord, that ye will be none of the wise minded, but that he that troubles you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. And I, brethren, if I yet preach the conversation which is the accusation of giving Paul the apostle. Oh, they said, oh, don't worry about Paul the Apostle. And when he comes to you, he doesn't preach circumcision. When he goes to other places, he preaches circumcision. So you must believe in circumcision. So the circumcision of the Jews will bring you into the kingdom. And if I, brethren, as they say, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the, then is the offense of the crosses. I would that they were even cut off. That trouble you, which trouble you. Now we look at chapter 6. Be not deceived, but it's not mord. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Then he goes on to tell us in, in verse 14, he says, But God forbid. I should glory, save in the cross of my Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. He said, where I was is where I'm still standing. The world crucified unto me, and I to the world. Oh, for such a stable soul. Oh, for such a steadfast preacher. Oh, for such a dependable minister, a dependable apostle. That's where he was ten years ago. That's where you find him today. Where he was when he brought the gospel to you. That's where he still is today. Times change, seasons change, climate changes, politics changes, even people change. But then the apostle said, as all those things, Change and decay in all around, I see, but abide with me, and you abide in the Lord's shoe. Now, whatever the change and whatever the decay, you're still standing where you stood many years ago. He said, Where I was is where I am today. The world crucified unto me, and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus, in verse 15, chapter 6, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor circumcision, but a new creature, and as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. Then he said in verse 17, from henceforth, let no man trouble me. From henceforth, let no man trouble me, where you know the suggestion, are you not going to change? Are you not going to dilute it a little? From now, 
problem and trouble me and say, will you not examine this new gospel? Will you not examine this other view? Will you not examine this other doctrine? For no one is said that I told you that if even an angel comes and preaches any other thing, let him be accursed. Therefore, he said, from now on, from his fault, let no man trouble me by bearing my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. That's why he wants us to stand unshakable, immovable, apostolic caution against false doctrine. Second Peter chapter 3. In Second Peter chapter 3, we're looking at verse. 17. If therefore, beloved, seeing ye know this is before, beware, lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. That's another caution right there. The same thing, the same thing Peter is now giving us his own caution, his own warning. That you should be aware, take it less, because of the error of the wicked, it should be away from a very foundation where you ought to be. Second John, the second epistle of John, I'm reading from verse 8. Look to yourselves, that we lose not the things which were wrought, but that we receive a full reward, who serve transgresses. And abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, as not God. He that abideth in, in the doctrine of Christ, he that abideth in the doctrine of Christ. I meet a lot of preachers, and I'm sure you, you've met a few of them too. Some of those preachers will say, it doesn't matter what they believe. All that matters is that believe in, they believe in Christ. They separate Christ from his word. They separate Christ from the truth. They separate Christ from sound doctrine. They separate Christ from only biblical scriptural conviction. They separate Christ from the eternal world. And they do not realize His name is the Word of God. And they say, it doesn't matter what I believe. All that matters is I believe in Christ. You won't you find that in the New Testament. Because it says in verse 9, Whosoever transgresses and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, this doctrine, there's no alternative, just one, everything the body of doctrine is put together, and then in the singular form, this doctrine, if anybody comes to you, a friend, a colleague, someone who has been a worker alongside with you, anybody, if any man comes to you, or a woman, somebody very close and very dear, if anyone comes to you and bring not this doctrine, there's no alternative, there's no duplicate, and receiving not into your house, never be in God's speed. For he that beateth in God's speed is partaker of his evil deeds. Acts of the Apostles chapter 20. Acts chapter 20 verse 28. Take heed therefore apostolic caution. Apostolic caution. Be not carried about. With every wind of doctrine. With divers and strange doctrine. And in this verse 28. It says, take it therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. For I know this. Paul the apostle was very clear. I know this that after my departing shall grievous words enter in among you, not sparing the flock. I know this. I know this, that after my departure, you know, he spoke about the rapture in First Thessalonians chapter 4, but he still knew he was going to leave even before that rapture. 
It's the same thing with, with Peter. And Peter spoke to them. He said, because the Lord has, re has revealed to me, I must leave this tabernacle very soon. And then he said, before I leave, I'm trying to just make you get established again. In this is so that you will not forget what I'm gone. And that's the same thing that Peter did, that Paul did, that all that's, that's what I'm doing too. That you'll understand that this, uh, this gospel and this doctrine outlives the preacher. At least the person that gave it to you, that God used to bring it to you, that even though the man may be here today and tomorrow, he is gone. Gone, taken away because of old age. That that gospel, that doctrine, that teaching will still remain with you. Because he said, for I know this, that after my departing shall grievous walls enter in among you, not sparing the blood. Also of your own self shall men arise, speaking perverse, speaking perverse things, to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore... Watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn every one of you night and day with tears. Now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of His grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. The caution. And now we go to point number two, the commitment. Absolute commitment. Absolute commitment to sound doctrine. We're coming back to Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13, we're looking at verse 9. Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. That's part one, not part two. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace. Established with grace. Established with grace. Good thing, wonderful thing, that your heart is established in Second Peter chapter one. Second Peter chapter one, and reading from verse ten. Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them and be established in the present truth. Yes, you know them, and you are established already in the present truth. All the same, I will not be negligent to put you in remembrance in verse 13. Yea, I think it meet, I think it necessary, as long as I'm in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off. There's my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ assured me. He said, now you establish the present truth. I will still remind you. And you need this absolute commitment to sound doctrine. Second Timothy chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter 4. We're reading from verse 1. Second Timothy chapter 4. Reading from verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God. God and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is serious. This is serious. You know what it means here? It means that Paul the Apostle was just in the picture of a, of a court. And then he was brought, you know, it's like he has the chief, a judge in court. And then he has all the, all the people that have, the, you know, the, the necessary qualification to be a kind of specially selected lawyers, advocates. It's like they were sitting down. And then with all the people that will take all the records, you know, the chief judge and all the supporting advocates and the lawyers. And then the recorders, he brought them everybody together. And then he brought Timothy. He then said, look at all the answers and look at all these big people of the law that interpret the constitution of the country. And he says, Timothy, look at them. And he says, I charge you before all these dignitaries that you will not change the constitution of the land. But now have you seen that picture in our brought? 
able to hear before the Almighty God and then before the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, Timothy, I charge you before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the day that is appearing and his kingdom. Paul, what charge did you give him? And what charge are you giving us today? Those you preach the word. Don't tell stories. Preach the word. Have you noticed sometimes when people preach and they tell stories? Later, we we'll remember the stories more than the verses of the scriptures they quoted. Stories, fables, tales, parables. We we'll remember those tales more than the verses of scripture. And so Paul the apostle said, here is absolute commitment to serve.